Hello everyone, welcome to Midweek Gaming. I'm Nick, and over there on the side of the comms, of course, Justin, providing audio, gameplay, commentary, and whatever else madness he wants to say along the way. So, interesting, interesting, interesting. I've been wanting to come back to Helldivers for a while now, and, well, I finally got the chance to come back to Helldivers, though not in the way I thought I would. Apparently there's a massive, well, not apparently, there is a massive controversy running around the Helldivers 2 subreddit, game and just about everywhere else that that game is associated with and reason playstation or sony and are they different these days i back when i weren't used to work for sony as an a rep sometimes i would say sony instead of playstation even when describing my job like here's the thing right with microsoft and xbox they're kind of the same thing but playstation and sony i think are like literally like legally separate brands so i, I, I don't know i don't know. I anyways keep track. there's too many of <laughs> and, them Anyway, so, why is there a controversy? And to the point where, last I heard, um, Helldivers 2 went on Steam from a overwhelmingly positive to mo to... Oh, let, me, let me check right now. I started it was negative, I think. It overwhelmingly is. negative? Okay, yep. Genius. So it hasn't changed. <laughs> I couldn't remember what the worst one on Steam review-wise was. But, um... And why is that? Well, recently, as of May 3rd, so Friday as of the recording of this video, which is May 5th, um... Sony released a, well, no, Arrowhead, re basically announced that starting now, you will have to create a PlayStation account if you wish to play Helldivers 2. Now, there's a whole reason behind this. But let me first preference by saying that Arrowhead has stated that this is not their decision. They had no control over this. This is PlayStation, Sony, whatever, demanding that they do so. But why are they doing so? Well, I mean, why are people looking so angry? Well, number one, people have to create another account and they have to tie it back to PlayStation, which you could go into the whole security risks and yada yada, but that's a whole rabbit hole and a half that, frankly, I don't have neither the extreme information, knowledge, or time to go into, because that'll just get a sidetracked and a half. But just know that there's a security aspect to it, but also because people just don't want to make another account, which is understandable these days. In Sony's defense, it is, well, among all of the reasons that they're claiming, which again, have a debatable amount of legitimacy to them, primarily is done for the sake of cross-saving crossplay. Because, for those who don't know, Arrowhead, the creators of Helldivers 2 and 1, have wanted Helldivers 2 for the longest time to have both crossplay and cross-save. That was originally in the cards when the game was first released, but it was going to be put back until they could get the game running and everything worked well. Well, because when the game first released, Talking between the systems, because crossplay was still, uh, was, at, was a thing, crossplay wasn't, uh, it was a mess. For those who've been around, uh, who remember Helldiver 2 launch, the servers were interesting. You could play solo missions just fine, but the minute you tried to hook up with anyone else, oh, all hell broke loose. We had a problem. So, we had a problem there. So, originally, Helldivers had it on their Steam page that you would actually have to have a PSN thing to play Helldivers 2, but because of all the system errors and yada yada yada, they took that off, and just so they can get everything still working. Because they weren't demanding you have it at the time, because they weren't, because again, they had to fix their systems. Well, now that everything is, I'm told anyway, quieted down, I haven't played Helldivers 2 in a, oh, a few weeks, they are putting that back, and now they're going to enforce it, I think, effective immediately or very soon. And everyone lost their shit. Because, again, people are being told to make uh, <laughs> make another account on the internet, which is already a controversial question to ask. And so the game all about war, conquest, and domination has now turned into the um, for, uh, forums, discussions, subreddit, and reviews, turning into war, conquest, and domination. <laughs> because now there's basically two kind of divides here between the opinions on the matter. You have the people who supposedly play mostly on PlayStation. I myself actually play primarily on PlayStation, so that full disclosure there. Who say that, you know, it's not so bad, yes, it's inconvenient, but whatever. And then you have the group which, again, supposedly, play mostly on PC. Or, supposedly, yeah, that's the word I should use. Who play mostly on PC. Who say, nope, this will ruin the game, it's terrible, this will be a, it's a horrible decision, I'm going to delete, stop, no, 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 no. And it's just turning into a massive civil war as a result of it. So, that's a thing. 
Yes. Like I said, I wanted to talk about Helldivers 2 in a better context, like, oh, the Illuminate came in, let's talk about that <laughs> faction, yeah! Instead, it's, yay, the game's imploding. Oh boy. So... <laughs> yeah. I mean, it kind of stems to an overarching of a lot of people don't like having to make uh, other accounts in order to play games. But that comes with the territory, especially nowadays when it comes to PC gaming. The fact that console gaming kind of wants to stay somewhat in in control in certain regards, or publishers want to stay control in other regards with their games, they go and will create this, and this is just a product of the, what it is nowadays. Yeah. Before we get too deep into the discussion, hmm. perhaps we should have come out from the beginning and stated... A uh, do we have a consensus on the opinion? Let me just ask that to you before I say anything. He eh. is what he our, is. <laughs> our general opinion, then, is that while it's inconvenienced, I'll be the first to argue that, I personally do not think it's... Again, I veer more to the side of it's not so bad. And this is not speaking as a PlayStation player. If I were a PC player, honestly, I would probably still say that, honestly. Hmm. I do play a lot of games on PC. Just look at my T Destiny 2 <laughs> hours on PC. <laughs> but, um... Uh, again, as a person who plays primarily the game on PlayStation, I personally don't think it's that bad, but I don't say that because I play PlayStation. Justin's opinion? Well, I'll let him tell you his opinion. Ba to me, it's good and bad. It's got its uses 100%, especially when it comes to crossplay, and that is, like, an important thing a lot of people do care about because there are people who enjoy playing pc and console mm. to me it is some level of inconvenience because to me primarily i will only play uh, pc i don't often play console and if it is me going and playing console it's me going and playing console for nostalgia nothing more <laughs> so yeah it's so yeah mm. It, it, it's something I understand, but it's also something that I wish could still be a level of optional for people who don't need it because, you know, they don't. Yeah, so, that's the thing. Like, yeah, honestly. I mean, at the current stand of things, like, we have crossplay, right? Hmm. And I could see, going back to our previous point, my previous point, is that the only thing this benefits primarily, and why I understand this as being a thing, is for crossing. Like I said, this was in the cards for Arrowhead since day one. They said since day one that they wanted to have cross save and cross play at some point because, while I was actually just telling Justin before the stream that the game is actually not that grindy as people say it is, like I don't find it that grindy honestly, and I play like I play some Korean MMOs, dude. Those are grindy. <laughs> like, I play Black Desert, <laughs> but um, like. Those kinds of things are grindy and stuff like that. I don't find, as a result, like, um, something like, um, Helldivers do that grindy, because at the beginning of the game, you're pretty much given all you need for the most part. You're basically, here's your weapon, here's your armor, go kill shit. Yes, if you want to make your shit better and upgrade some shit, yeah, you need some stuff, but honestly, as a guy who's been in some hardcore grinds, I don't think it's honestly that bad, truth be told. And honestly, you don't need the high end stratagems. Like, you. They're nice to have, and they really make higher-end difficulty shit useful, but at the end of the day, you can play Helldivers 2 just fine on lower difficulties, and you just don't need, like, the planet-nuking stratagems. You don't need them. You don't. Though, you really don't. Have, having stuff like that available to you in some amount is useful and is helpful. Yeah, it is useful. It is useful. It is helpful. Do you need yes. them? No. You just don't. like, do you need... Do you need higher guns? Well, again, uh, as I was telling Justin, a shotgun's a shotgun, a shotgun. One might fire energy, one might fire fire, and those might be situationally more useful. But generally speaking, a shotgun is a freaking shotgun, yes. or in this case, assault rifle. So, eh. <laughs> like, and honestly, their battle pass is not that bad. Like, here's the thing. I say battle pass, and everyone's going to say, oh, and mm -hmm. that's understandable. <laughs> that's understandable, trust me. I also play Genshin, as you probably know if you've been on this channel. I know. Play Star Rail and Genshin. I actually just bought the battle pass for fucking Star Rail. Uh, but anyways, but here's the thing: the actual bulk of the actual rewards, weirdly enough, are in the freemium pass. Like usually, it's reverse. They give you like a few things on the freemium track and like a bunch of extra good shit on the good one. And Helldivers, weirdly enough, and to their credit, they have that reverse. Ninety-nine percent of the stuff is on the freemium pass, and then if you want like this weird-looking armor set that's particularly gaudy, or this particular gun that. Eh, 
it's unique and it has it fires ice, so that might be useful. But then you pay. And even then, weirdly enough, you can actually find the premium currency in the game itself. Funny enough. Not in high amounts, mind you, but you can actually find it, which is already an improvement on a lot of freaking games. You know. I'm say I'm swearing a lot this episode, I don't know why. <laughs> but <laughs> my formalities have one out of the window. Nah, but the point is, again, it's not actually that bad. And truth be told, like I said, you can find most of the good stuff on the freemium pass anyway. Like, 99% of the stuff is on the freemium pass. I've not, outside of buying the game itself, paid for anything, and I'm content to leave it that way for now. <laughs> like, I might yeah, buy for the I, Citizen I, upgrade I, just I so I can of, of the mindset <laughs> of, Unless you don't need it, you don't need to pay for it. And if you don't want it, then you don't need to get it. If you want yeah. it, like, if you want optional stuff like that, then sure, you can go and pay for it, and that's out of your pocket and all that. But, so long as it's not a, you know, you gain a clear advantage from it, we good. Yeah. And again, it's not even a competitive game, really. Like, no, you, you can no. kill other players, but you technically really shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't, because then the community will find you and will remember you. you. I should not drop a hell pod on Jacob365, but I really want to drop a hell pod on Jacob365. <laughs> you see my point? But, uh, uh, but anyways, but yeah, that's kind of where we sit in terms of it. Like I said, I personally don't think it's that bad of a thing, and really, like I said, the only thing this helps and is really, like, this was going to happen, like I said, regardless, in my opinion anyway, because of the whole cross save element like here's the thing right and i only say this as a side note because a lot of games are or have already gone cross save in the recent years and that is that and i think warframe is a pretty good example of this warframe is a game that again i also play i told you i play a lot of things um that's on every device you can think of it's on xbox it's on playstation it's on pc it's on switch now it's on mobile these days only on apple no i'm not angry you're angry but um <laughs> It's on everything, right? But here's the problem. When when DE, the creators, wanted to go and do cross-play and cross-save, which they did in the last year or two, they had to figure out how to do this. Because, again, there's dozens of accounts now they need to deal with across, like, half a dozen platforms. So how the heck do you do that? Well, one thing you can particularly do is you have a centralized account. In fact, this is what Bungie does for the sake of their Bungie account. Basically, they have everything rooted through the Bungie account that becomes the main account and basically is the master save point of all the data. So I can play on my PlayStation account, on my Xbox account, on this, on that, on whatever. So long as it's all tied back to that main Bungie account, then all the data just gets pooled into one giant vat anyway at the end of the day. So it doesn't really matter where I'm playing it at. And that's kind of the same approach that Destiny, or Destiny, that DE took when it came to making their thing. You could either have an account merger, or you have an account, um, I can't remember what the other one was called. Extender? Uh, no, no, that's not the word. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. basically what it would play out is that these two accounts, if you were playing past a certain date, would become one. And basically, DE mandated that you would need to have, in this case, queer, I use it as a good comparison, because unlike Arrowhead, who now commands that you have a PlayStation account, Warframe commanded that if you were on console, you needed to have a PC account, specifically tied to Warframe itself. And this would act, again, as the central pool that allowed DE to effectively pool all the data in their own local servers. So you can now play on Xbox, you can now play on the PC, you can now play on um, PlayStation. Yes, there was cross-play before this happened, much like in um, Helldivers, but once they implemented cross-save, they needed to find some way to centralize that data. So you either needed to have a PC account already and then merge your old account to the new account, where one of those two would become the main account and would overwrite the other one, and all subsequent accounts would just pull and then uh, push into that account, or you needed to have, if you were going forward, to create a new account, but then you would also have to create a PC account, and those accounts would become, again, kind of conjoined at the hip, so to speak. And then any future account, or you would need to create a PC account, and that would be where all the data comes from, and then it would just kind of push onto your new account. It's a bit messy, because again, I don't remember the specifics, but you get the point. Much like in Helldivers, at least I hope you do, at least uh, and like in Helldivers, yes, you can do cross-play with different accounts, because it's literally just a question of getting the console providers and 
people to allow their stuff to talk to each other, which is purely a matter of uh, diplomatics as well as a bit of back-end code, which is becoming stronger these days. So I don't think there should be too much of an issue generally, as long as the game's built for it. But once you start doing cross-save, that's when you need to start doing a lot of back-end work and you need to have a you know central account. So in this case, unlike in DE's case, where they had everything centralized, PlayStation is, at the end of the day, the overarching honcho that runs Arrowhead. Arrowhead is a subsidiary publisher. Or a subsidiary developer, if I'm mistaken. And so, I hate to say it, but it kind of makes sense that they would be the ones who kind of have everything under their banner, because at the end of the day, you can only play Helldivers in two places right now. Helldivers 2 in two places right now. That's, anyways. And that is on PC. On Steam and I think a few other platforms, but I don't. I don't remember. think it's on. Xbox, I don't think so. To be honest, not so, not Xbox. Yeah. I mean, like other PC, um, like other PC stores. You know, like Epic and stuff like that. I don't know though. That one you'll have to quote me on. I or not quote me on because I know it's on Steam. I don't know if it's on other PC distributors though. But anyways, and PlayStation. Those are the only two places, generally speaking, PC and PlayStation. If you're not, you can't play Helldivers too. Yep. As of yet. So again, speaking from a very, uh, you know, very like very rational standpoint, it makes sense that PlayStation want to keep everything under their banner because they kind of <laughs> they run the house, so to speak. So, eh? But again, if you don't want to, it's for again very sensible reasons. But that's just my take on it. What yeah. do you think, Justin? I it like I, I said before. It's got its uses, it is helpful in certain regards, and then in other ways it's inconvenient. It's a back and forth, and no matter what, that's everything nowadays. Everything's a give and take. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, in fairness... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, PlayStation has been particularly, uh... Very, I don't want to say scary, very, but... Very shady in certain regards. Yeah. To, to be a... fair, they have been pretty darn shady as of lately. So... There's... <laughs> There's better ways to go about doing this, and PlayStation has not done those things. One of the things that we'll bring up uh, tangentially to this point is that what a lot of people are saying is that, funny enough, after, or should I say, before this reveal, this announcement, PlayStation on their official FAQs stated, and let me just go to the article, of which, by the way, will be uh, linked down in the comments, as well as the uh, article we're referencing for all this, which will be from Kotaku, which is the kind of war discussing all this nonsense. Anyways, on the PS FAQs before, it had, under the question, do I have to sign in to PSN to play a PlayStation game on PC, end quote. The answer was, and again quoting, signing into PSN is optimal when playing a PlayStation game on PC, end quote. No more, no less, that was it. That was before May 3rd when all this got revealed. Now, after May 3rd, Sony, PlayStation, whatever you want to call them, silently went into um, their FAQs and just ever so quietly change the answer. So now under the previous, and I quote, do I have to sign into PSN to play a PlayStation game on PC? The new answer, again, after May 3rd, when all this was revealed, is now some PlayStation games may require you to sign in and link to a account on for PSN. They didn't tell anyone this happened. <laughs> they just kind of did it. And people who were, I guess, trolling the PlayStation FAQs for one reason or another, Notice this change. Yes. And promptly brought it up. And literally, it's under the title under Reddit. Funny enough, uh, it was originally a post for Helldivers Reddit by a post called uh, Freeze Moon. And literally, his tagline for it was Sony trying to cover tr Sony trying to cover their mistakes in the wrong way. So. Uh, <laughs> and the article. Yeah, and the guy and the article that particularly mentions this from Game Rant literally seem literally states that it seems by the tone of this that Sony is sticking to their guns on this one. So if you want to keep playing Helldivers, you gotta play ball with the PlayStation. It seems. Yeah. So, again, as a guy with two diplomas in business management and going to go and pursue a degree in similar field, the exact same bloody field. Mm -hmm. And so I think I can speak with a level of uh, authority when it comes to business management from an academic I standpoint. Have a level of authority and, a th and <laughs> clarity on this matter. Speaking from an academic standpoint, again, you don't want to run a business this way. When people are pissed at you, your answer shouldn't be, well, deal with it. <laughs> like, that seems to be kind of Sony's approach here. People are pissed, and instead of, you know, 
coming out from Sony's end and kind of addressing it. They're just kind of letting Arrowhead, as far as I can tell anyway, so I kind of soak up all the blame, and Sony themselves are just like, well, eh, deal with it, and just kind of walking out of the room. That's not how you want to do things. Like, there are better ways to go about doing this. Now, again, had Sony come out and basically said, an Arrowhead by extension, kind of come out and said, you know, due to technical issues, we had to remove it prior to... Um, you know, we had to kind of push back that feature's implementation prior to the actual um, enforcing of this rule due to technical issues on part of the game itself. You know, servers were not working. So if you couldn't even get the game to talk to each other within its own system, how the heck could you get it to talk to each other outside of the system? Yeah. Yes. So, you know, if you kind of did that and kind of explained it and kind of maybe told people before you started say that, well, okay, as of today or tomorrow or whatever the day is, we're going to be enforcing this rule and gave no further context. Yeah, people are going to be pissed. Bungie or Bungie. I'm so used to talking about Bungie when it comes to mistakes in this channel. <laughs> when Sony and Arrowhead came out and did this, they could have had something like this prior to that release or during that release that kind of clarified the specifics. Were people are going to be mad? Absolutely, freaking lootly still. Were they going to be turning Reddit into a war zone? Well, we're, we're, Reddit's already a war zone, so it wouldn't have changed much. But, you know, it could have at least toned down this fire somewhat. Would it have been still there? Absolutely. Would it have been to this extent? I'm going to guess probably not. Because, like I said, they just kind of dropped this on players, and now you have the division of people who either didn't know or didn't realize that going in, and are now either willing to accept it or completely pissed at the fact that this is now being enforced. And you have, again, people who did know that was a thing, and yet are still pissed the fact it's still happening. Which, in that case, I mean, you yeah, it was told to you. So, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's purely, regardless of what PlayStation says, the benefits and cons and pros are. The only thing I can clearly definitively state is that this is for cross-play. Or cross-save, correction, cross-save. This is where it kind of comes in, because it's going to have to be handled one of two ways. Either Arrowhead themselves will have to amass all that data, which means you have to create an Arrowhead account, which I don't think is even a thing. Or you create a... Everyone who's on PlayStation is going to have to create a Steam account, and Steam's going to have to host all that, and that's going to be Valve doing it at that point. And, well... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to go over particularly well. I mean, to be fair, though, Valve does host servers for games, and, and it very well can be done, so... True, but then you have to talk to Valve and get their blessing on it and everything, and... Yes. Eh, and again, they'd have to be the ones keeping all that data themselves in-house as well, and... Eh? PlayStation already had all this in the cards, again, in advance, because, again, Arrowhead in advance wanted to make this cross-save, so... They probably have done all the dealing with Sony on the back end prior to all this, they only just pushed that implementation back purely due to their systems being a bit wonky at launch. Whether this gives any other benefits, pros, cons, or negatives, eh, eh, it's debatable at that point. But yeah, that's kind of what we have in Helldivers. Any end commentary on the matter, Justin? Nope. No? Nope. Alright then. That's a depressing episode. I'll probably still go back and play Helldivers legitimately, because... <laughs> like I said, I play it on PlayStation anyway, so... I already have a PlayStation account. They've already got my number. <laughs> but, uh... They already had me on file. They ain't going yeah. nowhere. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so, I might go back and play Helldivers after this and see what the heck's going on. But, eh, whatever. Hopefully, something better will come out of Helldivers in the future. Hope this gets resolved. Hope this answers some of your questions. And, yeah, leave us down in the comments. What do you think about all this? Are you going to still play Helldivers? Do you play Helldivers? Or Are you, you going to be... Dive? <laughs> do you die? I'm like, that's... Dude, that should be a license plate or like a saying for Helldivers. <laughs> Do you dive? Do you even dive, bro? Honestly, fucking Helldivers flexing on each other. <laughs> Do you even dive, bro? But, uh, well, tell us in the comments, what do you think of all this? And let us know. And of course, like, subscribe, feed the algorithm. If you've been on YouTube long enough, you've probably heard a thousand other YouTubers shill it to you. And honestly, but it it's is true. true. It and help it us. helps. It does help, yes. And we're a tiny channel, so we probably need it more than they do, who have like a thousand, two thousand, a hundred million subscribers. They can survive. We could always use the help. So, if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed this com this commentary, this video, then there is likely others too who have in who can enjoy it. So, going and liking and sharing it, it potentially allows them uh, to see it. Exactly. Or to be really, or to be really spineless, money for the poor, please. <laughs> Subscribe us for the floor. Thank you, sir. 
<laughs> Subscribe us for the poor. <laughs> but uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed this week's video, and uh, see you next week. Hopefully we should get these out. I'm trying to hope we'll get them back on Wednesdays, but we'll see. Um, anyways, have a good one, have a good night, or morning, or whatever it is when you're watching this, and uh, see you next time.